John 21, verses 1 through 14. John 21, verse 1 through 14. And I'm reading from the King James Bible, and then there's one more verse in uh, John 14, 21, kind of the reverse. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way he showed himself. This is directly after the resurrection. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said, we're going along with you. And they went out, immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Can you say no thing? Nothing. nothing. When the morning had now come, Jesus stood at the shore, and yet the disciples didn't know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Children, have ye any food? And they answered him simply, No. Then he said, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you will find some. So they cast now, and now they were unable to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord! Explanation point. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment. I, I, I like the old King James says, for he was naked. That was, they was doing some serious fishing. He plunged into the sea, but the other disciples came in a little boat, for they were not far from land with about 200 cubics, dragging the net with the fish. As soon as they come to land, they saw the fire and coals there, and fish laid on it and bread. My sanctified imagination says, and butter too. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you've now caught. And Simon went up and dragged the net to land and full of large fish, 153. Although there were many, the net was not broken. And Jesus said, Come, eat breakfast, come dine. Yet none of the disciples dare ask him, Who are you, knowing it was Jesus? Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. Now this is the third time Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. One lone verse in John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Come on, turn to somebody and tell them, it's the Lord. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord. What I'm going to talk about today briefly is what I call kingdom principles. They are keys to the Word of God. And somehow, when Jesus was out of the sight of these disciples and seemingly not present in this story, they lost focus. They got distracted for one way or another, from reason or another. And now, Jesus, they had forgotten who he was and had forgotten what he said. It just didn't seem real now because he was gone. He was present. They still had needs. They had to make a living. They had to do all these things. And it happens to us as well while we're doing life. We know that God is real. We, we, we know that the, what the Word of God says. We know that we're to obey God's Word. But, but somehow in the middle of our crisis or our situation or when we don't feel the presence of Jesus or maybe when it's not Easter Sunday and the crowd is here and things are high, we miss him. And he's not that real to us because I hurt. I'm in pain. I need. I got stuff going on. 
But see, Jesus is glorified when we are fulfilling his purposes and we simply hear him and simply do what he says, no matter what the situation or what the circumstance. It's called simple obedience. And that's what I want to talk about today. It is the first requirement that God gave at creation. The only thing he asked of Adam and Eve was just obey me. Just, just do what I say. It's, it's real simple. I'm not going to give you a host of everything. They didn't have King Commandments. They didn't have a whole Bible. They didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All they had was this word, just do what I ask you to do. Obedience. And we'll never get life right if we keep God in the margins of our life. It's not just God of the weekends, God of Easter. God, he's not just an option or another option. He has to be the center of our life. God first, God in the middle, and God last. This is not an option or multiple choice. And here in his last miracle after the resurrection, Jesus manifests himself, he shows himself, he unfolds himself. In other words, he makes himself real to the disciples. It's the same word used uh, in John, the second chapter, where he makes himself real at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. He reveals and shows his glory. But these folks have gone fishing. Many folks are fishing today, satisfy their needs. Maybe I can find it over here. Shh. Oh, empty. Maybe it's over here. Shh. Uh, just empty. Let me throw the net out here. It's empty. And people know what God said. People know what Jesus said. They know his commandments, but we're fishing for satisfaction in other places. They were searching for things in the energy of their flesh, trying their own way. And I told you they gave their best efforts. Peter fished out of his clothes. I ain't never fished that hard. I've been fishing. <laughs> and all they experienced for all that work all night was emptiness and a lack. They caught Nothing. They had nothing to show for doing it their way. They had nothing to show for their own best efforts. They were empty. For Jesus had not taught them to fish for fish any longer. He clearly came and said, I'm going to make you fishers of men and women. But they've gone back to fishing. And their failure shows the contrast between doing it our way and doing it his way. Our way, emptiness. His way, fullness. He meets our needs. He addresses our lives. Sometimes our lives are fishy. Come on now. We saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, we go to church every Sunday, but some are a little fishy. You, you get mad on the freeway. You, you acting crazy. You cutting corners here in there. I know what he said, but, but, but he don't understand this situation. <laughs> There's circumstances going on here. They didn't know Jesus. After three years of walking with him, sleeping with him, seeing his miracles, raising of the dead, opening of blind eyes, providing for 5,000 people food. And now, in this sense, they're so busy with what they're doing that they don't recognize him when he shows up. Many times we're the same way. We're so busy fishing, we don't recognize him, and he's right there. Standing right on the shores of our life, he's right there. But we are so distracted. We are so busy doing life that we miss him. Jesus shows up and says, children, do, do you have anything to show? You've been at it all night. You've been doing your own thing. You, you, you've been bouty bouty. Do you have anything to show? 
for doing it your way? And they came with one simple answer. We don't have anything, nothing, no. We don't have anything to show. We, we tried our best. We've been fishing all night long. Peter went overboard. <laughs> and we've got nothing to show for it. See, our success in walking with Christ is not due to our best efforts, our, our abilities. These were professional fishermen. This is what they did. This is what they do. But our best efforts often can come up with empty nets. Oh, I'm wore out. I'm tired. What you got to show for it? Nothing. I've been hard trying to run and trying to do this. Nothing. See, the Bible says in Psalms 1911, in keeping of his commands, there is great reward. Faith cooperates with God. Unbelief separates us from him. And we get so far in the distance, we don't know where the Lord is. We feel like our prayers are hitting the ceiling and falling down. But there is a key here. There is a kingdom principle. That principle, you're going to hear me say it over and over, is Jesus is made real in our obedience. When we line up with him, he becomes real in our lives. When we start running, looking for other solutions, he becomes unreal. See, God's love is unconditional. Everybody know that? Unconditional love. But you know his word contains this, th th this word, this tiny little word that says if. You know, God has a lot of ifs in the Bible. If we believe, we can experience his promises. And if not, we can miss it because we didn't align ourselves with him. Even in the little things, the small things, he, he is looking to make us better in the area of obedience. But don't get stuck in the middle of the story. That means things are going bad. God gives a promise. Things are shook up, going bad. There's a storm. There's something. He's not there. He's been crucified. Even though he showed himself to you, he's still not present. You don't know what to do, where to go. Don't get stuck in the middle of the story. Because many times in our life, Jesus seems painfully absent. Where is the Lord? Where's God? I'm hurting. Where's God? I got a need. Where's God? My children are in trouble. Where's God? Things ain't going right. Where's God? But remember, Joseph sat in prison, still holding on to God's vision for him. He sat there year after year. David ran from Saul from cave to cave to cave, still holding on to the vision of a throne and a crown that God had given him. See, we got to remember that faith is evidence of things hoped for. It, it, it's, it's what we can't see. That's why we have faith. If we could see it, we wouldn't need faith. And God says the just shall live by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And Lord have mercy, don't we want to please God? God's pleased by our faith. So why are we surprised when sometimes what God has promised isn't visible yet? I can't see it. I don't feel it. Jesus said everything was going to be all right. We saw him ascend. Uh, 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 we saw him raised after the dead. But somehow, I got to go fishing. And the other disciples know better than Peter said, we going to. We all going fishing because we all got needs. We all got bills to pay. We all got to do all this stuff. Jesus is talking about fishes of men. I don't know nobody. Men ain't giving me nothing. I, I need to get some fish. <laughs> See, we have to cho choose to hold on to what God has said to us no matter what the circumstances. And they couldn't feel Jesus. They couldn't see Jesus. He wasn't in sight. Nothing was happening. There was no more miracles at that time. Between here, now they're saying, where, where, where is God? I, I, I got to add a little something to this. Where's Jesus in all this? I, I've got to add something. Jesus makes himself real in obedience. I tell you this, 
after 50 years of ministry, 50 years, over 50 years of walking with the Lord, I've seen it time and time again. I've been there where I've been all fishing for something else, trying to find this and that. But when I aligned myself with the last thing he told me, he started manifesting himself. He that has my commandments, not the one that's got a Bible, but he that has my commandments and keeps them. That's the one that really loves me, Jesus says. And that's the one my father loves. And guess what? I'll come to him and I'll make myself real to him. That's a promise. If I have his commandments and I keep it, he'll make himself real to me in my situation. It may not end right there. It may not be over right there. I might not have it in hand, but he's going to come and make himself real until it does. And that's all I need. We say that, but is he all we need? Or do we need a net full of fish first? And then I'll be all right, Lord. Long as I'm blessed, long as I got some change in my pocket, everything going to be all right. But let me have a need. So we have to yield to the last thing, the thing that he told us. He's not restricted to our best efforts or our failed attempts. He simply says to them when they say they don't have anything, he gives them a command. Cast your net on the other side of the boat. Well, now, Lord, come on now. If they ain't on this side, ain't no fish on that side. I am a professional. You know, this ain't my first rodeo. I've been fishing for a minute. But they cast their nets on the other side of the boat. Good God from everywhere. See, when they heard him, they responded to what they heard. It was just simple obedience. And here, as soon as they threw it over, the net was packed out. And John, the one who who Jesus loved, he said those words, it's the Lord. <laughs> Woo! It's the, have you ever had that moment where you say, it's the Lord. <laughs> it's the Lord. I, I've been in some crisis. I've been in some bad places. But when I lined up with him, he showed himself to me. And I said, it's the Lord. <laughs> Tell everybody, it was the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. He's made real when we do what he says. It's a requirement of obedience. Peter, when he heard it was the Lord, jumped out the boat. But you know what I like about this? Remember, Peter was really struggling because he had denied the Lord three times. So Peter jumped out the boat, and Peter was swimming to Jesus. <laughs> he, he, he was making his way to Jesus. Let me get to the Lord. And the rest came, we'll get there after a while. Sometime you got to go overboard. Sometime you got to take it another further. Sometime you got to jump overboard and swim to Jesus. But you know what Peter got? While they were coming, Peter got private time with Jesus. They probably talked all about the situation. I know I denied you, Lord. I was wrong. The rooster gave his testimony. I didn't. You know, and, and all of that. Sometimes you got to go overboard and just, I got to get away. Just me and the Lord. I know the disciples, he love everybody, but... I got a situation that I got to talk out with the Lord, just me and him. See, we've already tried everything else. How about just doing what he asked you to do? See, Jesus tests us sometimes. 
so that we can learn the blessings that follow obedience. See, obedience first, blessings come. Come on. You get this? Obedience first, then come the blessings. Success in life follows obedience to God. Now, I know we don't like that word. I didn't like that word since I was a child. Don't touch the stove, I'm going to touch the trash burner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you all know what a trash burner is. You know, mama said don't, I'm going to do. They said don't cross on the red, I'm running across anyway. <laughs> Be quiet in class, I'm telling jokes. <laughs> Come on now. It's just innately in us. Isn't it amazing you don't have to teach a child disobedience, but you do have to teach them obedience. We don't like that word, but that's the if that God puts on us. Success comes when we listen to Jesus and do what he says. He comes to us. He said, I'll come to you if you have my word and you keep it, and I'll make myself real to you. I'll manifest myself to you. We simply have to do what God's word tells us to do and what God drops in your heart to do. See, the fish weren't on the other side of the lake. The fish were on the other side of the boat. Which means your blessing is closer than you think. Your answer is closer than you think and obedience is the key that causes you to see. And he manifests himself until they couldn't do nothing but say, it's the Lord. This is the point. Our blessing, our miracle, our answer to prayer are all closer than you think. The answer is as close as our willingness to do what God asks us to do. We wrestle, we fight, we say, that's not for me, and you know, that's for other folks, and, and I don't have to just line up all the way with God's word. Who does that? <laughs> folks, who God is in the process of perfecting, and we're all somewhere in the process, but the problem is we get stuck in the middle of the story. Because we can't see it, we can't feel it, we can't see him, we don't understand what he's doing, it's cloudy to me, I'm going fishing. Bet you I know I'd do that. But they didn't. If you're going to receive an answer from God, you're going to have to do what God says. And God's not asking us most of the time to do some great thing that a whole lot of people see. He's not asking you to sell your house and, and move to Timbuktu. Yeah. But it's the little things. It's the promptings. That's how we learn the voice of the Holy People. How do you know it's God? How, how do you know it's the Holy Spirit? By doing what he says. And the voice becomes louder and louder. And God's will becomes clearer and clearer. And we become more and more submitted to him. It's doing the simple work of obedience. See, knowing his commandments is what demonstrates our love. Obeying his commandments is how we demonstrate we love him. See, lip service is cheap. I love you. Well, if you love me, pay the rent. Come on now. But I really love you. If you love me, put some groceries in the refrigerator. I love you so much it hurts me. What's, what's the key word in that? Me. <laughs> and love demonstrates, obedience demonstrates that we really love him. He that has my commandments and keeps them is the one that really loves me. That's the one my father really loves. And I will come to him 
and manifest myself. I'll come to that one and make myself real to him. You know, it's so simple. Book of Mark says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. If we can keep that one, we're going to be all right. Just keep that one. If you don't remember the 10, keep that one. Because if I love God, I'm going to do what he says. And if I love others, I ain't going to hurt nobody. He keeps it simple, but he says, you got to do this. But the beautiful thing here is in spite of ourselves, he meets them and provides for them. He supplies every one of their needs. When the servants did what Jesus said at the wedding, he filled the wine pots with wine. And wine in scripture always speaks of joy. You want joy? Do what he says. Do what he says. Just simply do what he says. When the disciples cast the net on the right side of the ship, Jesus filled their nets, and not only did they fill their, he filled their nets, he revealed himself and made himself real to those disciples. People always say, well, I, I, I want the Lord to be real to me. When I was a new Christian, oh, Jesus, maybe just a year into to, to, to ministry, somebody accosted me on the streets and told me I was a fake, a phony, and a fraud. They were with another cult organization. And I, I wouldn't take their little pamphlet and stuff. I went home, and I can remember, we, we lived in a studio with my daughter, uh, who was about two then. And I went into the bathroom, and I knelt at the toilet, and I clenched my fist as tight as I could. And I said, like, Jesus, I want you to make yourself real to me. I really want to know you. I don't want to be no fake a phony, I don't, I don't want to come to church and look at the back of other people's heads, talking about amen and waving my hand. I really, yeah. really want yeah. to know you. Amen. And that's been my prayer for 50 years now. I want to know you. Paul says, oh, that I might know him. And the power is resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable to his death. Paul, wait a minute now. You done wrote 14 books of the Bible, they say. You done caught up to the third heaven. Miracles, you sent handkerchiefs from your body and folk got healed. You don't know him? He says, oh, I know him. But I really want to know him. I, I, I want to get so close. We used to say when we were young in the Lord, we didn't have no sense. We said, I want to be so close to Jesus, he got a scoot over on the throne. <laughs> I'm just here with you. I'm with you. you know? you tell Jesus my cousin. You, you, we, we tight like that. See, that's how I want to know you. That's what I meant in my youth and in my, my immaturity. I just want to know you. And the answer came to my spirit then just know me. How do I know you? He that has my word and keeps it. That's the one that really loves me. And that's the one my father loves. And I will come to them and make myself real to them. I will manifest myself to them. See, it's many times when we come to the end of ourself that God shows up. He's waiting for us to get exhausted. He's waiting for us to quit fishing. He's waiting for us to figure out in all of our solutions and all the stuff that we're doing, then he'll show up. It's the point when we give up fishing that God comes to us and makes ourselves real. I'm not fishing for nothing. I got everything I need in you. When we stop trying to do it and let him have his way, you know the old saying, let go and let God. But we don't want to let go. And so God waits until we do let go. But here's the amazing thing for this. When they got to Jesus, he already had the fire going. 
fish in the frying pan <laughs> with bread, with butter on the bread. My sanctified imagination sees the butter on the bread. And you know you got to eat fish while it's hot. You know how you use it? Yeah. That's how you eat fish, if anybody knows how to eat fish. He had everything that they were fishing for. He had everything that they were looking for, except it was cooked, cleaned, fried, bread, with butter. He's trying to demonstrate to us, he has everything I need. Why should I go out here looking for it when he's got it prepared and ready for me? And he doesn't scold him. He just says, come on, boys, eat. Come on to the table. I done fried up some fish. <laughs> the plates are set. I like the old King James says, come and dine. Just come on and eat. I always had, before you went out, I had everything you needed and were looking for. Come on, eat to your full. In spite of us, when we line up, he makes himself real. He addresses and he meets our needs when we align ourselves with God's word. I used to have a saying that I'd, I'd preach from back up, line up, and let's move up. So if we are out of line and we know in our lives things ain't just quite right. I, I know this is a tough message for some folk. But we know we're not right. We need to back up, take a look at what God said, line up, and then let's move up. Because Jesus is helping us, and even in spite of ourselves, he's always making something out of nothing. Come on, tell somebody it's the Lord. I remember that old song. Uh, you all know it. You would holler. Real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yeah. He gives me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. In the morning, he's real. Real, Jesus is real to me. Oh, yeah, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. One more time. In the evening, he's real. Real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yeah. He gives me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me right now. Real, real, Jesus is real to me. Whoa, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. you clap. Oh! 
on, just tell somebody he's real. He's real. The old bishop used to come to our church and say, I'm about to have a spanktimodium. I said, Bishop, what is a spanktimodium? Spanktimodium. He says, I'm about to get beside myself. <laughs> have you ever been there? He gets so good. You don't know why you're crying, but you're just crying. A song comes on and you just begin to weep because he's so real to me. You want him to be real? Back up, line up, and come on, let's move up to what God has for us. Amen? Amen. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. I'm so glad he's real. I was in the hospital and he was real. I had a need and he was real. I didn't have a car and someone drove one up and gave it to me. That happened three times. He's real. I didn't have money in my pocket and somebody slipped me a little something, something. He's real. And when you align yourself, you just see him at every turn. That, that, that's the amazing thing. You don't just see him on Sundays or, or when the big stuff happens, but the little things happen, you just see him. And, uh, th that's the Lord. That's the Lord. You, you, you get into what I call the flow. Anybody like to flow with the Holy Spirit? Get in the flow. You know what that flow stands for? F, faith. L, love. O, obedience. W, worship. You walk in faith, you love God with all your heart and love others, you obey God's word, and you worship him with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Hallelujah. Let's pray.